Welcome to Trail Angels, powered by Karen the Load. It's Annette and Mark, and we are thrilled to have you here. It's been some time since we have actually just done this podcast and this live uh, interview here. This summer has really gone by quickly, and we just realized that it has been a while, and we really felt that with what's going on in the world today, it just seems like there's so much. And the, the so much that's out in the world today is is important that we talk about, especially as we've seen it uh, highlighted, the what is that we're going to be talking about today. So this morning I was on my walk, and, and I kept thinking about a recent post. And the post was titled, Hold On, The Light Will Come. Mm. And I knew that we needed to talk about this. We couldn't leave the post as it was and the blog as it is, but we actually needed to address some of the comments that were left by you, our friends. And first off, just let me thank you for the engagement that we are seeing on Karen the Load. It's amazing to me what's happening. The growth, the vulnerability, people sharing what's working for them, and and it's making a difference. It really is making a community here. And so thank you very, very much. I think people really are feeling that they're not alone. You know, we've made a point the last few weeks to really focus our attention on becoming our better selves, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And uh, what has been interesting is a lot of the comments that we've been seeing that Annette just alluded to focus on how people, how you aren't feeling like you would really like to feel if you were your best self. And it's something that uh, as we've read through so many comments, it's apparent to us that there's a lot of struggling people out there. This t-shirt is one that I bought a few weeks ago and it says it all. It's okay not to be okay. I remember the first afternoon when I got it and I was wearing this shirt and you noticed it, Mark. And he thought, what are you wearing? <laughs> I've never seen that shirt before. He hadn't seen it. Amazon had, had dropped it off or, or the UPS and, and he hadn't seen this. And I said, it's really so important. I, I really wanted to see what reactions I would get by wearing. It's okay not to be okay. You know, here's here's what I my first inclination, my first thought was. You know, very often you see T-shirts that have a clever saying, or it'll say something, "I'm awesome," or or something else. Mm -hmm. But this T-shirt was a little bit different. It's okay not to be okay, which immediately told me, and it's not afraid of vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be. This is one of the things that has come with with my healing over the years. And it's been interesting. It's been interesting to see what's happened, but it's been really interesting to see what's happening in the world on the biggest stage with the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And here we have one of the all time greatest gymnasts who in the middle of the competition said, I'm not okay. Yeah, you know, and in fact, we could even take it further than that. Both Simone Biles as well as Naomi uh, Osaka from, from Japan uh, had had difficulties dealing with life to the point that uh, the pressure was just too much. And, you know, the, what was interesting, Annette, as, we, as we've been reading about uh, these two stories, is that there are so many people that are critical, so many people who have said, I can't believe that they would quit their teams, or I can't believe that they would that they wouldn't finish things out. Uh, that says a lot about people. Well, you know what it says really a lot about people is the fact that they're willing to deal with their difficulties and their vulnerabilities. Exactly. And then you had, um, is it Drexel that that won, he got gold in, in one of the swimming meets. And he talked about after in the interview, and he, he was brought to tears. And he said, it's been such a hard year. Friends, you're not alone if you feel like it's been a hard year. It has. And, and I think it's just been building and building and building upon all these things that we've had going on. So, think, if, well, think about it for a second, Annette, before you go any further. Think about those of us, all of us, have had difficulties during the last year. But then enhance that. 
by 100% with the pressure of uh, doing something that you hope that you can make yourself and your country proud of. All of those things, all of those emotions have just really begun to hit uh, all of us, really. It has. And honestly, it's something that makes me feel like, huh, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this. And and we're going to move forward. We're going to share with you some of the comments that was that have been written as part of this post, Hold On, The Light Will Come. And, and why I didn't want to just type a, a simple reply. But before we get going in reading these comments, I just wanted to share a statistic with you. The Anxiety and Depression Association of America estimates that about 16.2 million American adults struggle with depression each year. And that's a lot, but I think it's low. Well, I do think it's low as well, because this was actually taken, this this particular statistic was given before the last 18 months as we've been dealing with COVID and its repercussions. So, and these are the ones that are admitting it too. And and I think you're going to find a lot more. So I just, I just wanted to pull that out. But okay, so back to comments and, from and this it, post. Yeah, and, and in fact, there was one particular comment, wasn't there, Annette, that really made us scratch our chin and, and and really realize that there are so many people like this particular person that are out there. So many, and and I want to thank her. I, I mean, I will send her a message and it's going to be a private message. But I want to thank her for her vulnerability, for her wisdom, and her willingness to share with us Care in the Load community that's now 52,000 plus strong. And um, because I know someone needs to hear this. So I'm going to read this and then we're going to chat. Mm. She said, I was diagnosed. And, you know, obviously we're supposed to be doing this because I'm having all these messages come through and it didn't take my do not disturb. Anyway, this is what she said. I was diagnosed with clinical depression in 2017, and it came to a point when I almost ended my life. People don't have the right to tell you to get over it, or you are an attention seeker. When you are feeding your darkness with dark thoughts, you sink and sink until you feel like there's no way out. The only person who can help you most is yourself. You can have the best therapist in the world, but if you don't take steps to accept that you need to help yourself and act on it, you will drown even more into the darkness. Wow. There is so much here in her comment. First off, I'm grateful that you didn't end your life. That isn't the answer for any of us. And I'm grateful that you recognized that you had to help yourself heal. There are steps to be taken. There is... When you're going to a therapist, there's there's action. There are things that you need to do and to practice and work upon. And so you can have, the, like she said, the best therapist in the world, but unless you're willing to do the work, it really doesn't matter. And so what a key, key component to all of this. You know, one of the key components for me was, and as I was reading this, was that she said that she was diagnosed with clinical depression back in 2017, which tells me that she was probably suffering for an extended period of time even before that. And as we read this, we, we talked about uh, the fact that we don't need to be diagnosed with clinical depression to realize that we have issues that need to be dealt with. Right. And this is the other thing. You just don't get over it. It's, it's not possible just to flip the switch and just get over 
depression and anxiety. I know, I know that there are so many people that think that, but it's not possible. It takes work. It takes patience. It takes help. Sometimes that help includes uh, medicine, but it always includes a greater understanding and tools and resources to help you moving forward. When I when I think about what you're saying, Annette, I, I think of the mechanics behind a steam engine. A steam engine, for those of you who have ever seen a steam engine before, it can build up so much steam that if you're not careful, the engine will actually blow up. But what every engine has on that is a release valve that's usually triggered that when a particular when, when a particular temperature is is uh, there, that release valve will open and it'll allow some of that steam to get out. Now, think of the steam in your life. Think of all of the different pieces of information that's coming towards you. You know, we're dealing with political strife. We're dealing with a worldwide pandemic. We're dealing with so many different issues that one person says one thing and one person says another thing. And before you know it, we, we just don't know what is right and what is wrong. And so that steam continues to build and build and build. And if we don't have that outlet, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. And we're here to talk about some resources and some outlets for each of us in our lives. And first off, I just want to say that on our website, there are tools. There are tools there to help you, to help um, you find those those outlets and, and those things to help release the steam. Um, you know, one of the things that she talks in here was talking about um, that if we don't take those steps to accept that you need to help yourself and act on it, then you're even going into a deeper, deeper darkness. And, and I thought that was interesting because, I mean, there's action in this, but there's one you have to acknowledge that you have to help yourself. And I think at there's when we're in that darkness, it is so hard to feel like we're enough. Yeah, you know, and, and when she said that, uh, as, I, as I look at what uh, her comment was, you're right, Annette, there was so much that was packed into this, but she said, you know, if you can't help yourself, you'll probably never be able to get out of that darkness. And so the question that I would have is how do we recognize that we're in a darkness in the first place? It's interesting because um, as I've been thinking about this and, and those of you who follow our podcasts and, and, and a lot of our posts and different things, you know that I've struggled. You know that I've struggled throughout the years that I... Um, that there were just many issues that trauma in my life that that caused me to to feel less than to feel like I wasn't enough to feel like if people understood what was going on inside me or that things that had happened to me they wouldn't love me all these all these things that were so so many lies so many lies and you know it was interesting Simone Biles she actually said in one of her, she tweeted this out, how she had been told over and over that people loved her for who she was, but she didn't believe it until now because she thought it was only because she was, she was this incredible gymnast that had all these medals and these things. And people were responding to her with love and kindness, way more than those that are questioning what in the world did you do here and how could you do this? More people saying, we're praying for you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that you're struggling. All these different things. And so we have these lies that we tell ourselves and it, and it builds up and it's that darkness that builds up. But as I healed, I realized that I started becoming and finding myself more in the light. And that, that light became brighter and brighter. And, and so, you know, maybe in the middle of it, I didn't recognize that there was this darkness, this weight. I knew I felt this weight around me, but that's just kind of how life was. Mm -hmm. 
But when I got out of it, I really recognized it. And then when there were days that I, I may have woke up on the wrong side of the bed or something triggered me and I felt that, I, I mean, it was a beeline to that darkness and it was frightening because it was, it reminded me, it was so familiar, but I didn't want to be there. And so for me, it helped as I, I knew I needed help. Let's put it that way. I knew I needed help, but it wasn't until I was really out of it that I recognized how dark it was. So let's talk about that darkness for a second. And I think it's an important place to, to be because we need to ask ourselves the same question that this particular person that made a comment on our, on our, on our post said she had to recognize, first of all, that she was in that darkness and as, as we have talked to so many people over the last couple of years, there are some real commonalities when it comes to the darkness and, and where that darkness comes from. And so let me ask you a couple of questions, listeners, as to where you're at in your life right now. Do you find joy in the things that you used to find joy in more so before? Maybe, maybe you're not feeling that joy anymore. Maybe there are personal things that uh, you would like to do that you just don't feel that joy anymore. Maybe there are things at work. Maybe you don't feel as, as uh, fulfilled with your work. Maybe you feel like uh, just throw your arms up because, uh, boy, I just don't know if I'm really making a difference or not. Are those feelings maybe that you're feeling a little bit? What about feelings? What, what about uh, some of the physical attributes of your life? Are you, ex are you exercising? Are you meditating like you used to? Are you finding that your life is just such a jumbled mess that at the end of the day you wonder, did I get anything done at all? What about, what about uh, your weight? Now, this is kind of a touchy subject, and I know that. But have you found that uh, you've gained a substantially more amount of weight, or have you lost a substantially amount of, of weight? Without trying. Without trying, because that's a key. That's a key thing. But also, if you talk about, let's take it a step further, our eating habits and the patterns and how we eat. Are we eating to comfort or to self-medicate us? Are we eating healthy or is our eating similar? Because that's that's a key thing too. What's increased with us in, in, in the last, in the last uh, year or so? We have found... We, we have reintroduced ourselves to Netflix. You know, what, what do you typically do when you sit down and watch a program on television? You know, there's usually two things. You sit down and you watch it. Maybe you're, maybe you're on your device during the time there and uh, you're maybe not really, uh, maybe you're not really taking advantage of the time with the other person. Maybe what's happening is you're eating a lot more than you typically did as well. We just find that in those times where we just sit back Maybe we're not sitting back and enjoying life the way that we really should be. Are we present? Yeah. Are we living in the present? You know, another, uh, let me share this other example to you about light and darkness. I was listening to a podcast as I was on my bike ride yesterday. And it was interesting. They were talking about when they were in college and, and they liked to go into caves and is that called spelunking? Spelunking. Uh -huh. Spelunking. And where you go in, I, I have not sp gone spelunking. Have you gone spelunking? It's been a long time, but I did when I was younger. So can what happens? Is it tight when you go in? They, they, there's a spelunking in every single uh, cave that you go into. It's called the birth canal. And, and I don't have to really explain what that means, is that uh, you get uh, in there and it gets tight and uh, you, you wonder, oh, no, and you start to panic. But it's something very, very... Uh, it's, it's, it's tight, it's uneasy, it, but it becomes very dark. Yeah. And so here they're talking about, as they, they, they're just in a few feet in these caves, and how, you know, they, they came prepared. They had flashlights and headlamps, but at the time they hadn't turned them on yet because they just were entering in and they didn't think they would need them yet. And they talked about how they couldn't even see their hands in front of their face. And they were barely, barely going in. And then, you know, with the, the tools that they had, the, the flashlights and the headlamps, and they were be able to see, and then you go in further and it becomes more of an open cavern. Mm -hmm. And and it 
and it was this experience they were hoping. But the, the interesting point to me was that when they turned around to come back out, they could see this light from a far distance away, just this small, small light, but yet barely going in, you know, a few feet, it was pitch black. And so for, for those of us who, who may find ourselves in this darkness, there will be a little light somewhere that you can focus on. And they talked about focusing on that little tiny light. And as they got closer and closer to, to getting to the edge of the cave and getting back out, then that light grew. And, and it was just interesting for me because it was just amazing to me as you're focused on the darkness and you're facing away from the light, how dark and how just consuming it can be. Now, our, our follower, our friend, she talked about that if you're not careful, you're feeding your darkness with dark thoughts. And I kind of relate this facing, you know, we're going into the darkness in this cave. They're going into it. And as she, they sat there with in that darkness, and if we sit there in the darkness, then dark thoughts kind of feed and it gets heavier and heavier and darker and darker. But when we focus, change our position, we have a shift in our thoughts, that paradigm shift, and we start seeking the light, then it gets brighter and brighter. And that's where we find the help to get out of the darkness. Darkness is, is all about doubt, where light is about hope. And, and, and I love that analogy because it's so true. And, and uh, for, for any of you who have been in a dark cave before, you recognize that uh, there's not a lot of hope unless you are able to turn around. And, and I think the important part of that analogy is, is the, the action, the fact that they had to literally turn around in order to recognize that uh, there, was a, there was a way out. Sometimes we have to literally turn around completely before we can recognize the hope that really is there. Yeah. It's not the same comment, but I, I recall reading another person's comment and they talked about that they had to get out of their bedroom in their house because if they just stayed there, then that darkness, those dark thoughts. But once they got out, once they got moving, that then those storm clouds, you know, when you have this storm come in and it's super dark, but those clouds starting to lighten up, they start started to have a break. And, and that's how they deal with it. Um, and and I, I just have to share a poem. Please. Okay. Uh, th this is, this is one of my favorite poems. I, I think it's really appropriate for what we're talking about, talking about uh, on, on our darkest day, how do we deal with those dark days? Well, the poem goes, we have to believe in happiness or happiness never comes. We look beyond the clouds and see the shining sun. We have to believe the buds will grow, believe in the grass below the snow. That is the reason a bird can sing on the darkest day because he believes in spring. Isn't, isn't that true? It is. It really is. And um, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Well, it, it, you know, you know, it's and Annette knows I love poetry, and and uh, I find a lot of uh, I I, I find a lot of common sense mm -hmm. in poetry, and uh, there's so many, though there's so many poems that talk about about life, and and this is one of them, and it's it's one that we all have dark days, and I don't know about you, but in February my heart begins to look forward to the springtime. And as the snow begins to melt and as it gets a little bit warmer outside, I know that uh, before too long, we'll be able to start seeing the, the, the daffodils come up and the tulips. And, and before long, the beauty and the colors are there. That hope that we receive in the springtime with those daffodils, I don't think it's coincidence that those yellow, bright, happy colors you know, or what poked their heads through. 
But do we also do we also recognize that every one of us are going to go through the falls and the winters of our lives as well? And those are times we almost have to store up the good that comes during the spring and the summer and the fall that allow us to get through those dark winter months. Exactly, because we will. And, you know, I was talking with a friend and she was talking to me about maybe looking at things just a little differently and, and shifting the way I looked at different experiences. And, and it was amazing to me when I recognized that, you know, it was because of those dark winter days that I am who I am today. It was because of that cold and that, you know, those painful, dark, cold days that I had to learn. I had to learn to like that daffodil, to be able to poke my head through that dark dirt, that cold dirt, to reach for the light and the sun. And it was something that I had an opportunity, a choice. I had a choice to say, okay, I want to just bury my, my head back down in the dirt because this is too painful. Or... I just don't like, it's too much work. You know, all these, all these things that were, I didn't think I had the strength in me to accomplish. And so I thought, well, it might be easier just to, you know, bury back down in the sand, in the dirt and, and not do what it took to, to, to bloom and, and to grow. And, and I think that's really important. The one thing that we hear over and over again, it seems like is, when someone is down, uh, someone else might say to them that uh, you don't, that uh, you, you just need to find some happiness. Well, we've recognized in life that you don't find happiness, you, you make happiness. Happiness comes as a product of, uh, of one thing, and that's faith. It is. And, but can I share just personally here too? Um, you know, this, this uh, friend of ours that wrote this, you know, get over it where somebody else told her she was an attention seeker. I have been told if you just had enough faith, um, you know, you would be healed or, you know, whatever the case may be. And I questioned my faith. I questioned, well, why, why am I still in that darkness? But what I came to realize was God has a perfect timing. And if God just immediately took that darkness away, I wouldn't have become who I am. But let's talk about faith for just a second, because the question that might come up is, maybe I didn't have enough faith. Well, who is asking you to have the faith? You're basically having that conversation with yourself. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's needing to have the faith in you and who you are and what you can become. Exactly. So again, it comes back to action. It comes back to action. And then this is a great way of how we think. And this was another one of our followers who, who made this comment. One small crack does not mean that you are broken. It means that you are put to the test and you didn't fall apart. Mm. And, and that's what we're talking about here is that we need to shift how we, we look at these tests, these experiences, these feelings, and as we can shift just that little bit of paradigm shift, instead of saying, I'm broken, looking at it as, you know, I didn't fall apart. And it was a test and I succeeded. And so there's so many things here that are amazing to me and, and things that have helped me to think and to to understand more. And so thank you, friends, for, for your comments, because I am learning and growing because of your thoughts, your comments that have helped me to, to, you know, just think a little deeper on this. And how does that apply to me? And what can I learn from, from her experience or his experience? And that's what Karen the Load is all about. It's about sharing these opportunities, these lessons and the things that we've learned so that someone else who comes along that trail who might be struggling will see 
someone else's wisdom, someone else's Karen that they built. This is a Karen necklace that a friend of mine gave me. It's a reminder. It's a reminder to me of the things that, that I've experienced, but she's experienced and the lessons that she's taught me through her example and her experiences. Things that I do to get out of the darkness and stay in the darkness, that was a question. I have reminders all over. This little bracelet I just took off, it says, you are enough. Just a little reminder, I'm enough. Or it's okay to not be okay. And so that's another way, another tool that you can use in fighting the darkness. We've always had things around the house, haven't we, that remind us of, of certain of, of certain things there, certain attributes that we seek. Uh, and, and I think that's important to have symbols that you can look towards, things that uh, when you look at, it'll give you hope, it'll give you a little bit of happiness, and it'll remind you why life is worth living. Exactly. Another one of our followers said the way that she gets out of the darkness is that she prays to her Lord Jesus Christ, that he is her ultimate refuge. Now, friends, there is truth in that. And whether your, high, you, your higher power is Jesus Christ or it's Allah, the important thing is that you have opportunities, that you look, you pray, you seek that strength from someone who who can be your refuge. So so true. So so we look towards those that maybe not just to those, but we look back at ourselves and ask ourselves, when were the times that I was happiest in life? What were the times that I I, I felt like I was maybe making a difference? And Maybe, maybe just a couple of thoughts. We, we actually put this on our Instagram post yesterday. There, there were seven habits that we talked about. And just, just think about this for a minute. And these are very simple habits, simple habits that you can do just by thinking about almost. The first habit was to smile. Now think about that for a minute. When you're smiling, it's really hard to be upset, isn't it? It is. The second one is to be kind. Sometimes the most important person to be kind to is who, Annette? Yourself. It's ourself. The third is just a plea to not give up. Don't don't ever give up. Recognize that, as we talked about specific athletes here, they didn't give up. They're dealing with the person that is inside that they need to heal. And I'm sure that they'll be just fine. The fourth component is to not complain. How many times do we complain about things that we have control over that uh, we really shouldn't? It happens all the time. The fifth is to avoid negativity. Boy, that's a really tough one in this world today. There is so much negativity out there. Find avenues that you can find more positiveness in your, in your life. Sixth, and I really like this one, make peace with your past. Mm -hmm. And then number seven, take care of your mind and your body. Something that we talk about all the time. But these are things that as you begin to recognize that there will be miracles in your life. And those miracles might not be evident to others, but they're certainly evident to you. And those miracles may not be seen or recognized in the moment that it happens. But often as you look back and you reflect on different experiences in your life, you will see something and recognize that was a miracle in my life. And, and so with that, just wanted to thank you. We wanted to thank you for, for joining us today, for being a part of Karen the Load community and with Trail Angels, and for the example you are to each of us, the Trail Angels that you are. And we hope that you've enjoyed this conversation as we've talked about being okay with not being okay and, and holding on to the light because it will come. And Yes, we do have those winters. We do have those storms of our lives. But those are opportunities where we can learn, we can grow. And just like our, our um, listener shared, it may crack us, but that doesn't mean we're broken. It means we didn't fall apart in the storm. 
Each of us have a story to share. Author Brene Brown reminds us that owning our story is the bravest thing you'll ever do. The stories and experiences our guests share inspire us as well as help us to grow and connect with others. We invite you to become a part of Karen the Load community and Trail Angels through social media, as well as to like, share, and comment. Give us a review on our site, on the platforms that you listen to this podcast so that others will also have an opportunity to see and we can share this, this message of hope to even more. We are stronger together. Keep caring. We believe in you. Yes, we do. And you can reach out and we're here for you and you can talk to us and there's a calendar on our website that you can schedule an appointment with us to chat and we're here for you. Take care, keep caring. Thank <laughs> you.